you clicked on this video, I assume it's because you want to save money on spices, you want to start using spices in your cooking. So here are a few pointers that I have learned over my many, many years of cooking for cheap. So if you are completely new to using spices and if you're kind of a new cook and you don't really have any spices in your cabinet at the moment, and you wanna kinda start. If you buy all the spices in the world at once, that can get extremely expensive and you might wind up buying a lot of spices you don't wind up using. So my first tip is that you focus on salt first. <laughs> get a lot of salt, get it in bulk because it's already cheap as it is, but if you get it in bulk, it's even cheaper. And just adding salt alone to your food just makes it taste so much better. And along similar lines is start with buying spices only that you know you're going to use a lot. So you're going to use salt in pretty much every single thing that you cook, but if there's any other kind of spice that you know you love, you, you love anything that has oregano in it, for example, oregano should be one of the first spices that you buy. Don't buy spices that you've never had before or that you don't really know how to use just because you wish you knew how to use them or because they look cool. For some basic ideas, if you know that you like, say, Italian food, get oregano or Italian seasoning or red pepper flakes. If you know that you like things like soups and stews, then get black pepper, thyme, curry powder. If you like eating a lot of meat, either roasted, grilled, barbecued, pan seared, get garlic salt, garlic powder, any kind of steak seasoning, lemon pepper. So my third tip, which I kind of alluded to earlier, is don't buy spices or avoid buying spices that you've never had before or that you have never used personally. And this includes spice sets. It might be really tempting, like you see this shiny spice set. It comes with 20 spices and they're all in identical containers. And like those things can kind of make nice gifts sometimes. But if you see one of those, it might be tempting to buy it, but don't because you're probably gonna get a lot of spices that you're not actually gonna use. You won't know how to use. They might go bad before you figure out how to use them. And it's not even necessarily the best deal either. Uh, my fourth tip, if you are getting started using spices, is to err towards spice blends rather than single spices. So I'm talking Italian seasoning versus oregano, uh, curry powder versus like turmeric and cumin and fenugreek and garlic powder and red pepper. Just get the blend. Get garam masala if you really like Indian food. Get Cajun seasoning if you really like those kinds of flavors. Get taco seasoning if you really like Tex-Mex cuisine. Uh, you know, you could get six different spices to make a bunch of dishes, or you could just get one bottle of that spice blend to make a lot of the kinds of food you like and you'll save a lot of money. And then my fifth tip, this is gonna sound a little counterintuitive, but I would avoid places like Costco if you're just starting out with cooking and using spices, because a lot of spices lose their potency after a few months or a few years. And if you buy this giant thing of oregano and you're only gonna use this much of it within like two years, then you have like this much oregano left over and it's just gonna, it doesn't go bad but it just loses its potency. And you're actually not really saving money, you're just taking up a lot of extra space in your pantry. So once you are a little more comfortable with using spices and you wanna just keep getting more and more spices and you want to save money on the spices that you actually buy, here are some tips for that. Uh, tip number one, and this is gonna go against what a lot of you people have been saying in the comment sections of a lot of my videos, don't get your spices at the dollar store, okay? Sometimes you can get some good deals, all right? The way dollar stores work, in case you're not aware is they sell a lot of really, really low quality products. Uh, a lot of times their spices have additives. Sometimes you can get good deals on spices, but the thing is not all spices are the same price. Like some spices like green cardamom say are a lot more expensive than other spices like garlic powder. Uh, so one thing of green cardamom, one thing of garlic powder, if they're both the same size and they're both a dollar, well, you're getting a much better deal on the green cardamom than you are on the garlic powder. So if you buy more expensive spices at the dollar store, maybe you'll kind of get a good deal, but in general, you're actually not getting a very good deal at the dollar store. And my only exception is like, uh, get a spice at the dollar store if it's a new spice and you've never used it before and you just want to try it out. Even then, there are better options than the dollar store. Uh, my second tip is do not get spices at mainstream grocery stores like Safeway or any of the Kroger stores. You know, those kinds of spices that come in the little bottles and they cost like between three and six dollars and you get just a tiny amount between like one ounce and two ounces. Yeah, I used to get my spices there and it's so expensive. Uh, a lot of what you're paying for in that case 
case is the bottle itself, not the spice, which is partly why they're really expensive. Um, I got a 28 ounce bag of cumin at my local Indian market for about six bucks. And if I were to get like one of those little tiny one and a half ounce bottles of cumin at Safeway, it probably would have cost me four or five dollars. So doing the math, uh, it's so, 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 so much cheaper if you can buy your spices elsewhere and preferably in bulk. So my third tip for getting cheaper spices is if you do have to get your spices at a mainstream grocery store, try to go to the Mexican section of the grocery store and you'll see uh, they have those spices for sale that are in little tiny plastic bags with cardboard tops instead of in the glass or plastic bottles. Those tend to be cheaper per ounce if you compare the price per ounce on those spices versus the other spices they're generally cheaper. Uh, my fourth tip is where you should be shopping actually is mom and pop local Middle Eastern, Indian, and Mexican grocery stores. I mentioned my own uh, semi-local Indian grocery store. It's not that local. I usually make a special trip out there like three times a year or so to restock on things like ghee and other spices and fine basmati rice and honey and tahini and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, their spice sections are just like walls and walls of bulk spices uh, for some such amazingly good prices. And uh, find your local Indian market, find your local Mexican market, find your local Middle Eastern market. Uh, they're gonna tend to have much cheaper spices and a much bigger variety of spices too. And you'll be supporting a small business. My fifth tip, and this will not apply to many of you because they do not exist in many parts of the country or the world, uh, but Winco, I know I've raved about Winco in many previous videos, but for good reason, they're such a great store. Uh, but yeah, they have a bulk spice section where you can buy spices at wholesale prices, but you can buy as much or as little as you want for that wholesale price. So to get the deal, on you know, a bulk spice. Usually you have to buy a lot of it, but maybe you only want a little teeny tiny bit of it. If you go to Winkle's bulk section, you can get a teeny tiny bit of that spice, but pay a wholesale price for it. So you wind up saving a lot of money. Uh, this is also great if you want to get acquainted with new spices you've never tried before, go to Winco, get like just, just a tiny tiny, get like a teaspoon. You can buy like a teaspoon or two teaspoons of a spice for a couple cents. And it's a great way of trying new spices without like, wasting your money if you realize you don't like the spice later. My sixth tip is buying bulk spices online. I actually have never done this because I've never needed to. I've been lucky enough to live in areas that have a really nice, uh, rich immigrant population, so I've always had uh, an Indian market or a Middle Eastern market nearby for me to get my spices, and I've almost always had a Winco nearby to get my spices because I live in the west coast of the U.S., uh, but if you don't live in those places, uh, online, man, just, just look online for spices and you can find pretty good deals. And then my last tip with spices, and this is like higher level spices. This is like that expanding consciousness meme. <laughs> it's like the very last square of that. And I'm not even quite entirely there myself yet, um, but I hope to get there. If you're really serious about cooking uh, with a lot of spices, and you really wanna save money and also have the best tasting and the most potent spices, buy them whole and grind them yourself. And again, your local Indian market, Middle Eastern market, Mexican market, those are gonna be great resources for finding whole spices and then you can grind them yourself. The nice thing about whole spices is they are more flavorful and they, they retain their potency much longer than pre-ground spices. So a lot of pre-ground spices are not as potent after a few months or even after a year or two, but whole spices, they're gonna have a much, much longer shelf life. So that was everything that I know about buying cheap spices. Like I said, I used to waste a lot of money on all those little tiny glass bottles of spices at Safeway, and uh, I'm glad that I have switched over. All it takes is a little exploring in your community and you can find some pretty good places. Uh, if you know of any places that are a little more mainstream that I did not cover, especially online places to buy spices, uh, let everyone know in the comments, and I'll see you next time.